Minu vestus kaasaseks on Bob Hoffman, kes on selline reklaamimaailma paha poiss. Nii et kõik, kes reklaamindusest töötavad, jäävad tema raamatud ja teda peast. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Yes. What do you think if I, if I will say you that we will record this interview and then we will publish it in social media, in Facebook and hope for a lot of hits by millennials? Yeah. That's uh, it's a fantasy, but I hope it's right. Yeah. You, you are talking a lot about fantasy world. Yes. And a uh, lot about delusions. Yes. And uh, one delusion is the, is the age delusion. Yes. That um, we are thinking that um, uh, we are surrounded by millennials uh, who are consuming adult, uh, ads and so on and so on. Just explain a bit. Uh, is yeah. it not so? It is not so. The, um, in the U.S., where I am from, people over 50 are responsible for over half of all consumer spending. They buy, they uh, buy, in most categories, they are the leading buyers. They have 70% of all the wealth in the country, and they are ignored by marketers. And it's ridiculous. Uh, of all the adult groups, Millennials have the least per capita income, and yet the marketing industry is obsessed with millennials, and uh, they are leaving billions and billions of dollars on the table by ignoring the people who have all the money and spend all the money. Why is it so? Because people in advertising and marketing are young. In, the, in advertising agencies, there are 6% of people who are over 50. In the general population of adults, there are 47% of people who are over 50. So as you can see, the advertising industry is heavily populated by young people who think everyone is like them. It's marketing by selfie stick. If, uh, so if you are a really wise CEO, yes. you should hire these 50 and 60 year uh, old copywriters and, and, and stuff to, to be, uh, to be uh, innovative maybe. You should be targeting people over 50 for a substantial part of your budget because they're the people who are in most categories are buying most of the stuff. And you should be employing some creative people who are over 50 years old because they understand the mentality and the wants and needs of people over 50 much better than 28 year olds do. Mm -hmm. So you should uh, target not the millennials but, uh, but the mothers and fathers of the millennials. There's nothing wrong with targeting millennials for a certain percentage of your budget realistically in, in line with how much the millennials actually buy. There's nothing wrong with that. But to put all your money against millennials when they buy a small amount of stuff in the world is crazy. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. The other delusion uh, that uh, you're talking about is a digital delusion. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I remember myself 20 years ago, it was the digital, all this, uh, uh, all this fuss about uh, digitalizing. It was really great and we were hoping something very, very big. Yeah. Well, now it's not, not that... No. Uh, digital technology is absolutely huge, there's no question about that. But digital advertising has proved to be far less mm -hmm. successful than we expected it to be. We thought people were going to go online and have conversations about brands. And it, it's just not happening. Go to your Facebook page, go to Twitter, and look for conversations about brands. They don't exist. Facebook has become, Facebook was supposed, and social media were supposed to replace advertising. They were gonna, people were gonna go online and talk about brands and, and that was gonna replace advertising. In fact, Facebook has become the largest repository of exactly what it was supposed to replace, traditional paid advertising. Go to Facebook, it's all traditional paid advertising. It's not conversations about brands. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies still thinking about, uh, about uh, content and yeah. about uh, 
uh, about how to film something and put something on show and uh, on social media and uh, to get more clients. Like, yeah. like, do you believe in that? That Very, every every company should have uh, their own little TV company? No, I don't. Most most of it is a waste of time and energy. Most content is ignored by most people. Have things there to do. They they're into. They, they don't want to see, you know, videos about refrigerators. They don't want to look at your video about the pencils you make. It's it's a fantasy. Uh, the, the, yes, there are a few kinds of product that people are very interested in. Wine, people are interested in. Maybe they'll watch content about wine. Um, you know, food. Some, some food, Something. some, you know, the young people are very interested in, in shoes, sneakers, uh, running shoes. They might, you know, they'll watch Nike the content videos. But for the most part, most of the things that most people sell are very low interest categories. No one wants to watch content about peanut butter or paper towels or, you know, canned fish. No one, uh, it's a fantasy that people want to see that. But what should companies do then? Uh, why to invest their money if they, if they really want to be seen? What to do then? Advertising. Advertising? Yeah. The old good advertising. Good old fashioned advertising. It works very well. There's nothing wrong with good old fashioned advertising. Let's take a look at Apple, for example. Apple's okay. the most successful company in the world, right? And they're the most successful technology company in the world. And they have two of the most successful online stores, the App Store and the iTunes Store, right? And what does Apple do? They don't have a Facebook page. They don't run banner ads. They don't have a Twitter feed. They do, they do television advertising and outdoor ad advertising and, and print advertising. That's what they do. And, and nobody learns anything from that. Mm -hmm. Nobody has learned that lesson. For example, Pepsi, yes? Yes. Uh, Pepsi did something like uh, they, they cut uh, all these traditional, not all, but a, yeah. lot, a huge amount of traditional uh, advertising and decided to go online, yeah. to social media, and yeah. what happened? This happened in 2010. Pepsi decided that they were going to stop doing Super Bowl. They had been mm. big mm. Super Bowl advertisers for years. They decided they were going to stop doing that. They were going to stop doing traditional television advertising, and they were going to do a huge social media campaign called the Pepsi Refresh Project. And they put tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars into this social media program. And in that year, they dropped from their traditional position of being the number two soft drink brand in the U.S. to the number three soft drink brand in the U.S. Mm -hmm. They lost 5% of their share of market, which converts into hundreds of millions of dollars. And they quickly, within like a little over a year, scrapped the whole thing and went back to doing what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. and the, now that's not, now, uh, don't get me wrong. It's not that there aren't some social media programs that are successful. I myself am a social media success story. I, I have been, you know, I have built my speaking and writing business on social media, but I'm very good at it. <laughs> and there aren't okay. very many people okay. who are very, most people are terrible at it. And what they do is self-serving stuff. Mm -hmm. And their content is self-serving. Their, their social media is self-serving. I try to give people who follow me, who read my blog, who read my newsletter, who read my books, valuable information and that's what makes success it's not that i'm brilliant or anything it's that i know what readers want and i try to give that to them rather than doing self-serving stuff mm -hmm. that's the key to successful social media that's the key to successful content mm -hmm. most companies don't understand that most companies think that social media and content needs to be about them it shouldn't be about them it should be about their readers, about their customers, about what those people want to know. But th there are uh, other things uh, too. Uh, for example, this digital fraud thing. Oh, uh, yeah. We are, do, are we really thinking about what uh, might happen when we provide our information there? How secure is that? And it's very insecure and it's very dangerous. And this is the one thing that I'm most concerned with these days is the amount of information 
that's being collected about us without our knowledge and without our consent and is being sold, traded, shared without our permission. It's very dangerous. We know what happens in societies when governments know everything about us. You've had that experience with KGB and with, uh, and, and you know what that's like. We don't know what it's like when marketers know everything about us, follow us everywhere, listen, read our emails, read our text messages, know who we're talking with and what we're talking about. And they do. And we don't know where that leads. That's unprecedented. It's very dangerous and it needs to be controlled. If you uh, can have a one sentence to say to Estonian big companies or even small companies who are thinking about getting more clients, then what, what should it be? What can you say? That to? There's no single answer for every company. Every company has different issues, different problems, different kinds of consumers to deal with and there is no single right answer for every what you need is smart marketing people and smart advertising people who can analyze the situation and give you sensible strategies the the one strategy fits all which we currently have in the marketing industry there's one strategy that everyone we need to get more digital we need to get younger that's everyone's strategy and it's wrong the strategy needs to be built on a factual basis, not on cliches, not on what everyone else is doing. Thank you, Bobo. My pleasure.